Uh, we're gonna have a moment of real talk as I uh, tend to my cuts. Um, so this was supposed to be literally a walk in the park. You know, that's what I planned for. It's where I geared up for. And that no hiking poles, shorts. I really was thinking this is going to be a walk in the park. Find a little use trail or a remote spot that just the locals know about, yada yada, you know, that kind of fun. Yeah, it's all a bit of a mess. <laughs> it's a cool place, but I completely lost the trail down here. Well, my use trail turned into no trail, turned into bushwhacking. I'm pretty sure I'm back on it. Um, the map says it crosses from that side where I was just below this split. Um, so I'm in the right general area. Trouble is now there's a gigantic cliff on this side. Yeah, it's a gorgeous day. Now this isn't a trail, um, but I bushwhacked up to here. It's a little bit clearer and the map says the trail hits this elevation if I go further down. Um, I hate bushwhacking through this. It's you know slow to grow back and it hurts to go through so I'm gonna take the easy route. We'll see how this goes. And you know it's <laughs> it's humbling. Yeah, so I feel that finding the trail um, kind of bushwhacked up the easiest part, and I figured I could get up on the ridge and walk up there. So I think I'm gonna just break straight for the fire road, and if I find that use trail, then I'll go out to look out. If not, well, I'll wander around up there. Yeah, humbling, you know, um, when things don't go <laughs> the way you think, the way you planned. Um, and I think it's what I needed, in part because, you know, when things do work the way you planned, or when you are prepared, you kind of pick up a little pride. So, <laughs> the sun came out, so it's kind of pretty, um, which is nice, but there's a, uh, yeah, there's, oh, we're going a ways. And then since my last map break, I've got about twice as far to go up. It's hard to tell looking up, but I'll show you the view. It looks close, um, but it kind of rolls away from you. The place is pretty though. I'm alive, <laughs> that's good. A little flatter section near the top. I scared this bird. Um, pretty sure his nest is just around here. All right. Um, yeah, none of it's bad. None of it needs, like, serious bandage work. I just want to get some get some water, get some alcohol on it. So, speaking of the humbling, yeah, things are going according to plan. You know, I'm about to bail on the rest of this trip. It was supposed to be a training hike, you know, 10 miles. <laughs> I'd be lucky if I make half that. Um, cool little classic desert find. Yeah, I still got a ways to go, but man, the going is easier. <laughs> and I think I needed it, the humility side of it, because you may or may not know, but last weekend, a couple of friends and I were out ascending Baldy, and we actually met a hiker in distress. A uh, severe combination of probably altitude sickness and dehydration. Yeah, he was like barely coherent. His wife was super worried. They were planning to spend the night. They ended up bailing. We helped get him off the mountain. He could walk, so it was mostly, uh, it was partially token, but we had rehydration salts, which came in to help. We prayed for him and, you know, walked him down. So we had to feel really good about ourselves, you know, about myself. I was the one prepared to be on the mountain. So today, <laughs> I'm the one not prepared. So I was so excited when I got up on the little ridge top because I thought the bushwhacking was done. But man, the stuff just came through as a mess. Yeah, and it goes. Um, yeah. And it's kind of humbling. You know, you think, oh, it's right by the city. I don't need anything. Man, I got torn up. Is it cool to have done that off trail? Yeah, would I do it again? No. 
got a little more open. Of course, rock slide risk is high again. Getting up there. Um, if anybody's wondering, <laughs> I think the climb from the bottom of the little gully off trail um, is total in the 600, 700 feet range. Yeah, the wilderness has a way of humbling you. That's the, that's all there is to it. You know, you go a few times and when things go going to plan, you can get kind of arrogant, like I can. And then, God decides to uh, <laughs> remind me that the mountains are much bigger than me. And, yeah, it's, it's probably good to be reminded. Got a little cairn up here. I'm just about 10 feet in elevation, a couple hundred feet shy of the road, her road up here, um, because that's an actual trail and I'll probably run into people out there. I'm going to go ahead and take a little break here, enjoy some food and solitude. So yeah, another thing I learned about preparedness last weekend, not, I'm not a prepper by a by stretch. Um, but when I go out in the woods, I'm into being prepared. You know, I'm into having, yeah, being able to handle an emergency or being able to help others or help myself kind of thing. Um, I'm out in the wilderness. And so the hiker we ran into last weekend, yeah, he was actually prepared. Him and his wife um, were out and they, she's a nurse. They had a first aid kit. Um, you know, I was pretty impressed. They had a headlamp. They weren't planning to do any night hiking. They still had a light on them, you know. The wife got got their tent set up. They were planning to spend the night, so they had a tent. She got everything set up, got them laid down, drinking water. She was doing pretty well, but they, you know, the two things they probably should have had for that particular situation, which is dehydration salts, specifically. Something to get the salt content and water absorption back up. Um, and then a way to call help, secondly. So, were they prepared in a general sense? Yes. And I think a lot of times what we talk about preparedness, that's what we mean. Yeah, in a, in a general sense, I got my first aid kit, you know, which they had. Um, maybe a Survival kit, you know, fire kit. Yeah, when we talk about preparedness, then say, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared. But I think we've got to be specific. What are the things we're actually prepared for? The things that I have the tools, the skills, um, the abilities, you know, the training uh, to actually do or to handle. Um, and I think one plus side of that is I, I have a really extensive first aid kit. It's probably super overkill because if I look at some of the stuff in here, I'd say, oh, this gear helps me be prepared for such an absurdly unlikely situation that I probably shouldn't be carrying it. So first, I'm going to show you a little bit about where we are. Here I am. I'm on my fire road. <laughs> Malibu's off that way. I'm just coming down off of this guy. Just met the fire road. Now maybe 100 feet up there. But anyway, it is beautiful. It's also hot. Toasty warm. Oh, there's one more <laughs> potential issue. Um, this fire road slash trail thing leaves the park at some point before it connects to the road. But the park website doesn't recognize it at that point. So I'm either going to get to a no trespassing sign, the trail might come to just a dead stop, or I'm going to be able to walk out as planned onto PCH. Uh, yeah, we're going to see which one that's going to be. You're probably wondering, wait, why am I walking this way if I just said the trail might end? Well, the park doesn't recognize the trail past the park boundary, but I've got two maps that tell me, one's Google Maps, one's paper, uh, well, was once a paper map, but electronic now, <laughs> tell me the road continues out, um, and it'll get me out to PCH. Um, so one of those maps, of course, told me there was a trail that I followed till there wasn't a trail, so I think 
since it's theoretically a fire road. <laughs> yep, this is a fire road. <laughs> I think if it's since it's a fire road, it should connect all the way through. Yeah, so had my trail originally worked as promised, that's where I would be. Out there, with a little point. Definitely below here, but kind of supposed to get you right up to the cliff edge, basically, overlooking the ocean. Another day when I haven't already worn myself out running through doing the bushwhacking, might attempt it. So yeah, I'm committing again, committing to this descent because it's very slippy slidey way down. There's a chance, I look into this chance that the actual fire road is over there. I'm just on a trail. Whoops. Yeah, so I had wandered off the fire road. See, I just, uh, my steep descent was off that little thing. That was on a used trail that ran parallel to the fire road, which I'm pretty sure is this. Pretty sure? The map seems to agree. It runs on a ridge top. The alternative trail ran through a ravine. So, hope this is it. <laughs> Wish me luck. See, this is cool. Thank you, hikers, before me. We said, hey, that's not the trail. The trail goes left. Some more retracing, and <laughs> now hopefully this is the way. Through the worst, that part where the picking trail is hard, but man, am I thankful for people who set up trail signs. Naturally, shortly after I said the trail was easier picking, I lost it, found it again, lost it again, found it again. Now I'm here, my map. It has a discrepancy. My two maps should try to be in different places. Um, I'm choosing this way because I have a preference for the more open country. Because I can move in it anyway without a trail. Yeah, this is beautiful. So this is what I'm coming down from. So I've got a ways to go to the sea and i got to pick up the pace. Prepared for, I would say, you know, I follow nothing fancy advice than that. I'm pretty prepared gear-wise to deal with bleeding. Um, you know, because one of the things that you gotta worry about things that can kill you quickly out here. <laughs> and then I'm more likely to happen. So anyway, I think you're getting the point. I don't actually need to make another first aid kit video. You know, there's a thousand of those out here. So, um, but the question is, you know, what am I prepared for?